Medial patellar luxation, commonly referred to as MPL, is a common cause of lameness in dogs, especially the small breeds. In this video, we are going to visit with Dr. Peter Vogel, who is board certified in veterinary surgery. A patella luxation is when the kneecap itself, or the patella, actually comes out of the patellar groove. And so you have a groove here at the end of the femur that the kneecap rides in, and then of course it's attached to the front of the tibia. Now these can come out in either direction. They come in two flavors, so to speak. You can have a medial patella luxation where the kneecap luxates to the inside, and that's actually the most common type of patella luxation. But it can also go to the outside, which is called the lateral patella luxation. Patella luxations are graded from one to four, and that's just a way to measure their severity. Now a grade one patella luxation is a kneecap that you could push out of the groove, but otherwise would never come out on its own. And those are usually asymptomatic, non-clinical, and don't require treatment. The most common is a grade two, and that's a kneecap that pops in and out by itself. And this is the type of luxation where you may see a lameness that's very intermittent. In other words, you're running around, happy, everything's fine, suddenly they hold the leg up two or three or four steps when that kneecap pops out. When it pops back in, the leg goes down and off they go. A grade three patella luxation is one where the kneecap is out all of the time, but you can push it in. These dogs often don't have an intermittent lameness because their kneecap really isn't moving in and out. A grade four is very much like a grade three, the difference being it's out and you cannot push it in. And these are the most severe form of patella luxation. Well, this can occur in both dogs and cats, and in fact, any breed. Although, the most common breeds of dog that have this problem are what we call chondrodystrophic breeds. And those are the little dogs, the toy breed dogs, such as chihuahuas, uh, miniature poodles, teacup poodles, Yorkies, beagles. We certainly see this in the basset, but any small breed, toy breed dog. So uh, animals with patella luxations, it's important to recognize that these are usually, as fact, they're almost always congenital abnormalities. These are generally breed related. It's very rare, in fact, it's exceedingly rare to ever see a traumatic patella luxation in an animal. Clinical signs are, vary depending on the severity of the luxation, and of course it also depends on whether it's affecting one knee or both knees. Clinical signs are rare, if ever present, with grade ones. With grade twos, typically what they will see is a lameness that sort of is intermittent. Grade three and grade four uh, luxations cause more significant clinical signs, but since the luxations aren't intermittent, they're cons persistent, the clinical signs are more referable to hind limb lameness. These dogs are typically bow-legged if it's an in medial patella luxation and uh, have very short strided gaits. They have difficulty climbing stairs. They have difficulty getting up on things. And one of the most common problems is they are poor jumpers. If you suspect that your dog is affected by patella luxations, uh, the first thing you should do is talk to your veterinarian. This is a diagnosis that can be made as early as eight weeks of age, your veterinarian will do a physical exam and can diagnose these by palpating them. They may also want to take radiographs to evaluate the conformation of the bone, whether there's a torsion, the conformation of the hip and the knee as well. So therapy for this depends entirely on how severely affected they are. If they're not showing any clinical signs, then generally no treatment is indicated. If the symptoms are mild or occasional, then most of these dogs will respond to relatively conservative measures, such as exercise moderation, occasional use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or aspirin-like medications, uh, diet changes, usually to one of the orthopedic type diets that are very high in omega fatty acids and sometimes supplementation with glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate can be helpful. There are a variety of other therapies that your veterinarian can discuss with you. In general, this is a problem that's not going to get better without surgery. Now, if it's not bothering the animal and it's not getting worse, then that's fine. But if things are getting worse or they're having persistent problems with lameness or can't do the things that they wanna do or the owners wanna do, then surgical correction becomes the best treatment of choice. The prognosis with surgery is excellent. Most of the dogs become asymptomatic, non-clinical, the patella luxations are resolved, and the animals can go on to be normal as far as activity goes. If you are the owner of a small breed dog that limps 
or even occasionally holds up a back leg, you should call your veterinarian and have them perform a physical exam. If an MPL is diagnosed, your veterinarian can prescribe the best treatment options for your pet. I hope this video has been helpful, and thanks for watching.